Hello and welcome to a Yas Marina Endurance Race Tips video. I will show you how you can go far. I'm driving my 2019 Ferrari. It is fully upgraded. Now, when this light goes green, I'm not going to go forwards. And I'm going to explain this in depth. We're going to use something that is called clock management technique. I will get more into that later. For now, I want you to watch. As soon as I reach a shaded portion of the track, I'm going to gun it right there. Now, take a look at my distance. See how it's just starting to count now? When you drive backwards, it doesn't count. So watch at the line, 0.34 distance. I've already logged that much, even though I'm just starting the race. So why am I doing this? Well, for that very reason. You see, clock management technique it's all about getting the most out of every single bot and every single lap because at the beginning of each lap, we get a lap time bonus. How much do we get? Well, that depends on the track. At Yas Marina, we get 26 seconds. I actually made a video where I show you how much time I get at every single track. Now, watch this. Just as I'm going to be running out of time... Oh, look, there's some bots. Now, that's cutting it super close. And obviously, I did some trial and error to figure that out. Now, I still have to drive pretty aggressive for a little bit, and then I can slow down, but not till the end of this lap. Now, I was mentioning a video I made where I show you how much time you get at every single track in the game. I'm gonna put that at the very end of this video with some other links, because it's a very useful video. I also get into a little bit of strategy there, but you need to know how much time you get. Like, at this point of a lap, you've gotta know how many more bots you can pass before you're wasting it. And I know that because I only get 26 seconds, I can keep passing them. So take a look at this. 36 plus 26 is 62. So there we go. That's what I'll have to watch as we're going through this race. So this very lap, I should be careful. Now at this point, I'm really avoiding damage and I'm purposely staying on track as much as possible. But as this race goes on, You've got to adjust your strategy and adjust your racing. I went off track for just a pinch there. That's okay. I gave up a little bit of earnings. I'm not going to slam on the brakes and lose all that momentum. Um, endurance races, they're really more about earning from me. And of course, going as far as I can, the farther I go, the more I earn. But you don't want to just slam on the brakes and lose your momentum because you're just wasting time that way. So. I can still lay back. These bots are going to be very easy and very slow. They get more and more difficult the further you get in the race. Now is when I have to start thinking about how many more bots I can pass before I get to the start-finish line. I do not want to waste time. So, if my timer is at, let's say, 85 seconds when I cross the start-finish line, then I've wasted quite a lot of time. 21 seconds to be exact, right? So here I'm looking at my clock thinking, well, I guess I could pass one more, but it won't really be an issue. So here, this will be great. I won't be able to pass him. Watch this. Okay, I'm gonna slow down a bit. I don't wanna pass him. I'm gonna give up a little bit of momentum and I know he's gonna slam on the brakes there. And this is the routine for the first several laps. We'll get more into the strategies that we adjust to later. Coming up here, I have an interesting decision to make. We've got two bots and I'm just getting on to my speed run. So I take a quick look at my clock and I only gave up about three hundredths of a second. Slamming on the brakes there means I'm giving up a massive speed run that I don't really want to do that. I would do it though if there was, uh, if that was a pack of three bots, I definitely would have done it because, oh boy, I didn't mean to do that. That's a really bad place to have that mistake. Um, this early in the race, it's not that big of a deal. Getting back to what I was saying, if that was a pack of three bots rather than two, I would have been giving up a whole 10 seconds if I passed him. Well, that's just way too much. Okay, so here I am, and I'm going to start thinking about my clock here. So sometimes that means I'm going to lay back a little bit. You see, if you don't go backwards at the start, that's fine. You don't have to. But you're going to have to go really slow for the first few laps, or you're going to be throwing away a whole bunch of time. That's what most of you guys are doing if you find that you can't get very far in an endurance race. You're, you're wasting your bots. So you never want to see that clock turn yellow. Again, not to a ridiculous degree, like don't throw yourself sideways or throw yourself into a wall to avoid it, but look ahead, plan ahead. See, here I am, 87 seconds. I'm going to lay back a little bit. See, I'm off the throttle there, braking a little bit, set up a pass. 
And there we go, a clock is below 80. If I pass him, it will not exceed 90. So don't worry about giving up five hundredths of a second or even a whole second. Let's get into settings. I have all of my assists off. I use tilt B controls and sensitivity two. To do this type of racing, you really do need to have all of your assists off. You see, brake assist high will come on too often, too early, and it will stay on for too long. Brake assist low comes on too late, so you have to supplement the braking by braking early, or you slide out on the corners. That makes you think you need traction control, but traction control is just more brakes. It will stay on too long, and often you're better off just getting off the throttle, steering into the skid, and then getting back onto the throttle once you regain control. Now, tilt B, I find tilt B is best, uh, it gives me the most amount of control. If I lose traction, I lift off the throttle, steer into my skid, and I can pull out. Now, I gotta be careful right here. I should not pass this guy. If I pass this guy, I'm gonna overfill my clock. So you see that? But I'm gonna set up a pass. Perfect, look at that timing. There, I maybe gave up four or five hundredths of a second. Not a big deal. Oh, well I gave more when I hit the wall. Anyhow, you get the point. And let's see, I finished my conversation there. Steering sensitivity. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. I run sensitivity two. I know other people that will run sensitivity zero. You'll find a lot of the top time trial guys run sensitivity zero, but I know some guys that use sensitivity four and they're better than me. So it's personal preference. When I first went to no assist driving, I used sensitivity 10. And man, I can't even control a car that way now. The lower the sensitivity, the more control you're going to have in the corner, the less twitchy it's going to be. However, you're going to have to turn your device more to get that turning. So I only run sensitivity zero in a handful of cars, MP4X, Lotus 125, Ferrari F14, basically any of the open wheel cars that are pre-2019. Everything else I run sensitivity too. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit faster here. Uh, you still, you don't want to take damage, it's going to slow you down, lower your grip, and make your brakes worse. But a little bit of tapping and pushing, that's okay. Now there's a gaggle, I can pass him, and I could pass one more, but I shouldn't pass both of these guys. Oh, you got to watch out for those ghosts, don't know if you saw that on my left there, but the bots here, they have turbo boost. I'm not sure if they still do an update 8.7. I actually recorded this footage a while ago and I forgot about it. And then I saw someone posting a uh, request for help and how to go further at Yas Marina. And I thought, wait, I never made that video. So that's why I'm putting this up now because I forgot about it and found out I still had it. And this is a really good race. So we're chugging along here. Now my clock's getting still pretty good, but you can see the bots are getting more scarce. Now, every once in a while, you're gonna come up on a gaggle of them. And <laughs> gaggle might sound like a funny word to some people. Let's see, I'll say a group of bots or a bunch of bots. And then you gotta make your decisions. You really, again, you don't wanna be wasting it. Here you can see, I'm not really that worried if I go off track a tiny bit here and there. Not a lot, but on the odd inside corner, you can see that I'm, I'm having little flashes of red there. And I don't really wanna be doing that. Not that big of a deal at this track, as you can see, I'm really not giving up that much when I do it. Because again, whenever you see a di your distance turning red, you aren't earning a thing. Okay, now I'm not going to get close to a fill timer that time. I mean, I didn't fill my timer all the way. I was quite a bit under. So at this point, I need to start doing some more aggressive stuff. And this is where it gets a little bit controversial. So, you see I'm getting a little more generous with my cuts. Again, I don't want to take damage, but oh, nuts. Just hit the draft as I was rounding the corner. Doing some more aggressive cutting could be hard if you're running steering assist high. It might not let you cut it off track though a little bit the way I am. However, steering assist low will probably let you get away with it. So here I'm gonna to try to cut a little bit and I got into the throttle at the wrong time. Boy, that's extremely costly at this point of the race because uh, bots are really hard to, to get to now. So that definitely cost me time uh, and distance at the end of this race. But you gotta stay really aggressive to get really far. We're getting low here. I'm not going to be able to get too much further unless I get a big gaggle of bots. But I'm already a lot further than most people can get in this race. 
And if you've done this a lot, you know that this is already difficult territory. But there's more aggressive cutting. Here you see I'm driving quite aggressive now. Look on your right hand side. There's a big sign right there. That's my braking marker. And then I'm into the throttle there. Now, you can drive this ridiculously deep. In fact, sometimes I go full speed right into the wall, kind of like this. Oh man, if I had not clipped him, that would have worked. In the past when I do that, I bounce off the wall and gain time because of how fast I drove through that corner. I just missed it by a few hundredths. Okay, well that's definitely gonna cost me a little bit in my distance. I mean, it's nice to get that bot. So here, I know I can't get another bot, so I'm gonna keep the rest on track. I wanna have a nice speed run here. Ah, it's not as good as I wanted. Okay, now I wanna carefully only break if I have to. And let's just roll this out. Let's see how far we can roll this out. Compared to the pre-2019 cars, these Formula One cars roll really far. When you drive some of the older cars, like the Ferrari F14, you get off the gas and that thing slows down fast. So, nice to get a little bit more distance out of this, and there we go, 43.23. That's a pretty good distance. I'm happy with that one. As I show you my earnings, I'll remind you that I filmed this pre-update 8.7. We now have a 250,000 daily limit. And here's a link to the video I talked about showing you how much bonus time you get in every single endurance race and other videos you could find interesting. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Thank you for joining me.